One of my favorite things about doing video reviews of fountain pens is that I get a front row seat to watch new companies and new models of pen test the waters of the market. It can be a really difficult market to break into. Fountain pen people make their opinions fast, and they have long memories. If you do it the right way, you're usually set. But if you do it the wrong way, well, let's just say it takes a lot to recover from an early misstep. Last year, I was contacted by a gentleman from the Republic of Moldova who was considering starting up his own pen company, and he asked about what he should name it. We corresponded back and forth a few, couple of times, but then I didn't hear anything for a long time. Then, a few months ago, I got an email introducing me to his new brand of handmade fountain pens. Today, we will be diving into the flagship model from this brand new Moldovan pen brand, Denoble. Hello everybody, I'm Matt. Welcome to The Pen Habit. I'm really glad to have you here for this review of a pen from a new manufacturer, Denoble Pens, D-E-N-O-B-I-L. Uh, they are based in the Republic of Moldova, and uh, I've, as I mentioned in the intro, been communicating a little bit with Victor, who is the CEO of the company. They sent me this pen for review, so this pen was provided free of charge. All opinions expressed herein are my own. So, the Denoble 300 is their kind of flagship pen. Um, they've been doing some kind of interesting things, so I'm excited to show you how this pen fits into the world of fountain pens and how it works. So let's dive in. Pen comes in this, uh, it looks like pine, uh, dark stained pine wood box with a little, you know, silver or gold colored uh, clasp. Open it up. Inside, you get the Denoble plaque in the middle of the box lid. Then you have a product care guide, a little note from uh, Victor, who is the founder of Denoble, and uh, the certificate of authenticity, all on really nice kind of textured cardstock. And then you come to this white velour bed on which the pen rests. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way and show you the pen itself. Now this is the Denoble 300. It's their flagship pen, as I mentioned. It is made of black ebonite with steel colored accents. I've got the rounded finial here with a steel clip. The, the clip is pretty sturdy, um, gives it but a little bit of give, so that's nice, and the ball is folded metal. Uh, the cap body expands here and then kind of turns a corner and goes into a straight cylindrical shape down the side. So that's a little different. Um, the pen body itself is, is relatively unadorned, uh, but you do have this, and I don't know how well this will show on the video, the Denoble 300 right here, which is um, laser etched into the side of the pen as an imprint. You've got a steel washer here and then another little finial on the end. In general, this is a pretty standard cigar-shaped pen. It is very reminiscent to me of the ebonite version of the Sailor King of Pen, um, but with some slightly less ornate fixtures. So, you know, the, the clip itself is not anything special. It's a pretty standard run-of-the-mill clip, but it's very high-quality ebonite. A lot of lower-quality ebonite tends to have inclusions or pitting. This doesn't. It has an almost silky feel to it, uh, almost satiny. Um, and it's also very, very nicely polished and sanded. So there are no tool markings on it. Uh, it was polished to a really uh, beautiful high gloss shine, but uh, with the hand oils, it has picked up a little bit more of a satin finish to it, which uh, I actually like a lot. So if you wipe it clean regularly, you can get it back to that high gloss finish very, very easily. I don't personally care all that much. I kind of like that satiny finish that has has collected, a little patina that has collected overall. And I love the way ebonite feels in the hand. This is some of the nicest ebonite I've had a chance to use. Uh, all right, so let's open up the pen. Now here is where one of my biggest bugaboos with this pen comes from. So 
This is a four turn cap. We've got one, two, three, four, and almost a quarter to open it up. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is this is a single thread start pen. So, um, or single start thread pen. So what that means is some threads will have three or four locations where you can start the threads meshing. This only has one. It does mean that the the pen the cap will always go on exactly the same way every single time. On the downside, it means that if you want to have a lot of threads to keep the pen secure, you've got to twist and twist and twist and twist. Whereas with a multi-start thread, you don't have to have as many turns to, to get the threads to mesh because you're meshing multiple threads at once. Um, I don't love that. And unfortunately, with multiple turns like that, this pen goes from a note taker to a long form writer for me um, because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to twist the cap four and a quarter times every time I want to jot a quick note down. This is a pen I'm going to sit down and write with for long periods of time. And that's fine too. Uh, open up the pen. Underneath you've got a tapered section, also of ebonite with a little flare here, and then a number six size Bach steel nib. I believe they also have gold nibs available, but this is just the Bach version. Um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty standard number six size nib. There's nothing particularly special about it. Uh, it's not even branded with Denoble. It's actually branded with the Bach branding. The tenon of the section is made of ebonite as well. So your ebonite to ebonite here. I believe this pen can be used as an eyedropper, although I have not tried it. Um, but the threads are very nicely machined, very smooth, very tight. So I wouldn't be too worried about it if I want if you wanted to try eyedroppering it. And if you do eyedropper it, you're going to get a lot of ink in this pen because this is a gargantuan pen. This is quite a bit larger than a Mont Blanc 149. It's larger than a Pelican M1000. It's even larger than my Classic Pens LB5 slash Sailor King of Pen, um, especially when it's capped. This is a long pen, and I'll show you pictures of the comparisons in a bit. With the size of the pen, Another thing, it's a minor thing for me, but the nib feels a little out of proportion. I kind of wish that a pen this large would have come with a number eight size nib, um, simply because a number eight size nib would feel more fitting with a pen this size. Pen does post, I should mention, and it actually posts quite deeply, so it's very nicely balanced, very comfortable in the hand, and of course the ebonite feels great and, and kind of warm and alive under your hand.
as I mentioned a little bit earlier, this pen is uses just your standard number six Bach steel nib. So if you've used these nibs um, before, you know what you're getting. These are the same nibs that Keras Customs uses, for instance, on their pens. Um, they're, they're fairly standard nibs. They're pretty well known. They're generally quite high quality. Uh, this particular nib is, I'd say maybe a three to four on the feedback scale. So it feels um, like a felt marker. On, on, pa on this Rhodia paper. So it's not super, you know, glossy smooth. Um, it just gives you a little bit of that nice feedback if that's the kind of thing you like. In terms of wetness on a scale of one to 10, I'd put it at about a six. So it's moderate, but a little bit more than just smack dab in the middle. And you can see that here, um, you know, it's nice wetness there. Nothing too spectacular. Um, you know, so it's, it's nice and wet, but not overly so. Uh, this is a medium nib and it runs kind of standard medium width for a Western medium. Uh, I have written with it for long periods. I'd say it does exhibit only the tiniest, tiniest little bit of ink starvation. It doesn't stop writing at all, but it does tend to, dry, to, to feel just a little bit drier on the third or fourth page. Um, nothing that stopping for 10 seconds didn't immediately solve. So I'm being really, really nitpicky about this, um, but uh, but it's, it does feel just a little, like it's, it has a hard time keeping up if you write really, really, really fast, but only by a little tiny bit. For reverse writing, it's actually quite nice. Um, just a tiny bit scratchy, but not bad at all. I'd say that's kind of like a Western fine. It's actually still pretty wet for a Western uh, for a um, reverse rider. And of course, as a steel nib, you're not gonna see much in the way of line variation. This just isn't a, a line variation kind of pen. So, um, it's, you know, it is a really good rider. It's very comfortable in the hand. Uh, I was able to use this for, you know, a six page handwritten review with no problems other than that minor, minor, minor ink starvation that I was telling you about. And that could be just as attributable to the ink as it was to the pen. Um, love the ebonite material. It's very high quality ebonite. The, the craftsmanship on the pen is really great. Uh, there were no tool markings. Uh, it was well sanded, well polished, well assembled. Uh, it feels solid in the hand, but it's still light. It is, I think, a little too big um, just in general, uh, it feels a little too oversized in my opinion. Um, but that's mostly when you look at it compared to other pens. By itself, it doesn't feel quite so bad. Uh, and then the minor complaints of the four turns to unscrew the cap and a, a nib that feels just a little bit too small. But aside from that, this is a really nice pen and a really, really good writer. The Denoble 300 lists on the website for $199. Uh, it actually retails, or at least at the time of recording this video, at $159. Now, $199 is, I think, just a little on the high side for this pen. Uh, it is a standard steel nib, um, and it's, you know, they Denoble seems to have adopted the Henry Ford philosophy of color and material selection, which is you can have any color you want so long as it's black. Uh, they've they've decided to stick with black ebonite, which I think is a wise first choice. Uh, in the future, they may want to they may choose to expand the the material selection, but right now this is really nice ebonite. It feels great in the hand, and they know how to work it well. Um, so. At 159, I actually feel like this is a pretty darn good deal. It's a nice oversized pen made with very high quality manufacturing, very tight tolerances, and a very nice finish um, in the same price range that you're going to get from Edison uh, or Franklin Christoph, the Lamy 2000, that sort of thing. So it, it fills that same niche, but it's ebonite. And most of those manufacturers aren't making ebonite pens uh, in that price range. You can also compare this to some of the less expensive ebonite pens you might get out of India, for instance. Um, I've, I've tried a few of them. I certainly haven't tried all of them, but in my experience, the 
quality of craftsmanship is not quite as high, nor is the attention to detail on the finish on a lot of those Indian pens. So you get a really nice writing German nib in a very, very nicely manufactured pen at a nice middle price point of $159. Uh, if you're looking for something like the Sailor King of Pen Ebonite, and you're okay with not getting the Sailor nib that goes along with it, you might want to look at this pen because I feel like this is this is a really great budget alternative to the Sailor King of Pen Ebonite, which can be, you know, upwards of $1,000. So for, you know, <laughs> for 15% of that price point, you could get another really nice Ebonite pen that is really well made. Well, I think that should do it for my review of the Denoble 300 fountain pen. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or head over to penhabit.com. You can leave them over there. And of course, over on penhabit.com, you'll find the written review and additional photos as well. Uh, let me also please take a moment to remind you, uh, if you're looking to buy uh, a pen or looking for a place to buy pens, uh, don't hesitate to check out some of the Pen Habit sponsors. They do a great job of making this whole thing possible. So, uh, you know, if you buy from any of my sponsors, make sure to let them know that you appreciate them supporting the Pen Habit uh, as much as I do. And of course, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. All those links are down in the show notes below as well. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on the Pen Habit. Bye.